guitar. This is the PRS McCarty and it's from 2000. I bought it in 2008 and it was it was at a quite a crucial point in my playing career. So I was at university and I was in my third year and in my third year I did um it's known as the dissertation but it wasn't a 20,000 word essay it was a performance and I had to play um some Frank Zappa I'd spent there was quite a lot of things I was playing as part of this set so that it included um Derek Trucks um there was some Hendrix Zappa Brecker brothers um some John Coltrane so I was playing I was playing quite a few uh, quite far out things, quite technically demanding. Um, my main guitar at the time was a Les Paul and I was trying to play the, um, I don't even know if I can still do it, it's from Inca Rhodes from Frank Zappa. Um, <laughs> tried uh, a custom 24 and I tried a custom 22 and I really I thought I would love a custom 24 because I grew up listening to Carlos Santana um, who had you know just some of the most you know some of my favorite guitar tones are, are that kind of really warm <laughs> So, you know, I, I love that kind of sound. I was heartbroken when I started to actually play some PRSs and it just wasn't working for my hands. And I like a thicker neck. I don't like a thin neck. And these are all, all the ones I've tried to that point were thin neck ones. Anyway, this one was at the, at the height that you could get the guitar because that's part of the issue with nice PRSs. Is on, the, on the walls back then you, you have to ask for someone to pull it down and then you enter into a conversation about are you really going to buy one and I, I, was, I had no intention in buying this guitar anyway this was at head height I could grab it took it down off the wall tried it suddenly all these hours of practice I was putting in so I was doing like you know eight to ten hours a day of practice at the time on my instrument I was really really going for it and um, I could just play all the things I've been trying to play for ages. And I don't know whether that's because I'd had a break. And that's normally when all the gains come. Same with everything, really. But the, um, the it just sounded spot on. Anyway, I had my Les Paul in the car. Uh, I helped my friend out with his, with his guitar choice. I think he bought a Telecaster in the end or something like that. Um, and... I went, I just walked in with my Les Paul that I bought off them about two years before. And this guitar, I was, I was like 18 when I bought the Les Paul and I wasn't very kind to it. I loved it, and um, but this was just something a bit different, something a bit more special. And <laughs> one of my guitar students was actually in the shop and he saw me bringing my Les Paul in he said what are you doing and I was like well I found this other guitar and he said well would you know can you replace a Les Paul with that and in hindsight it hasn't got the edge of a Les Paul it hasn't got that vibe that they bring visually because it was a burst looking thing you know this does it does have a nice color to it but it isn't a Les Paul I know the goal when Paul, so I've watched all the videos of Paul Reed Smith with these, and the goal at the time for this guitar was to get the Dwayne Allman sound. And it does sound like, it can sound like a Les Paul, um, but it doesn't quite feel like a Les Paul and it doesn't have the same vibe. But, you know, when you're recording stuff for people, it does the job. It's cool. It's just the most incredible guitar the workmanship on it I mean it's dinged and stuff I remember you know putting a big ding in it in front of a class once that was a bit embarrassing I turned and just hit a table and just bash the edge but it is just the most 
Stunning. It's just beautiful. It's got the moons. I would have preferred um, birds, but I got it second hand. I mean, it was it was like seventeen nine nine second hand. So at the time, it would have been like quite a lot of money, brand new. And I know that uh, there's a cons the consistency of Paul Paul Reed Smith guitars is great. It's not the same as Les Paul, where I think I think a lot of people moan about Les Pauls being. Uh, inconsistent and you know not oh you don't get a good one if you you know you could try 14 they'll all be different they'll all be different for different people so I tried 14 Les Pauls out the other week um, at, uh, at Taverners Guitars and they've got great selection and they were they weren't rubbish they were all great there were 14 great Les Pauls but they were different and that doesn't mean that they were bad but there was one that I was looking for I have a certain image, certain weight in mind. I like a lighter guitar. I mean, this is a light guitar for what it is. Something with a big makeup or cap. Um, it's still probably my heaviest guitar that I own. But, it, you know, it's, it's not that light. It's not that heavy. The main thing with guitars for me is if they ring out. So, like, this is unplugged. And it does have that kind of vintage instrument ping thing. If you dig into it, it does. It's got a split coil as well. So that's with the with the coils um, tap on on the neck pickup. When I'm doing gigs, you know, everything kind of needs to sound a bit like a strap usually if you're doing a function. And that's something that Les Paul doesn't deliver, you know, you, you don't get the, that spankiness. It's partly to do with the uh, scale length of this guitar, I guess. Um, and then if I use the, the bridge, Nothing with the machine heads, they've always been great. Okay, by the way, I got it signed by Paul when I met him. Um, the frets wore out. They wore out, but that's because I played it so much. So that, that's what happens, unfortunately. Um, so I've got, there's a Paul Reed Smith specialist over in Burton-on-Trent where I used to live called Peter Oakley, took it to Peter Oakley and uh, they had they got it sent off to Alluvia who could refret it. So I've had it refretted, and it came back the same. You know, came back like it was new. It was it was lovely. Um, the tarnishing. So I tarnish guitars. So my I had a Gibson ES three three nine for about ten years. That tarnished a lot in the time that I had it because of the sweat. But this um, hasn't tarnished very much, really, considering um, it's still got shiny, bright bits on it. Um, this pot sometimes flicks back. So I'm going to have to open it up and move it again. So it does tend to move, so I need to get the long nose out and do that. I might try and find a method to, to keep it stuck. So, I mean, luckily you know it's not a hard thing it's not a bad thing and that's it they're literally the only things it's not needed any adjustments it's just been 
the most perfect guitar to own um, and I'm, you know, trouble free really. Um, so yeah, I recommend it. You can use it for any gig. The coil tap's really cool. I think visually it's a very nice guitar. So I've used it on quite a few music videos and things. Um, yeah, I dig it. I recommend them. If you see one, snap it up.